Hey guys, Jessica here, the Ferry Family Coach. And in this video, we are going to talk about how to help a dog with separation anxiety. Um, I, I have completely lost count of how many people have asked me for advice on helping a dog or treating a dog with separation anxiety, who have asked me if they think if I think their dog has separation anxiety, all the way from, from people who literally just adopted a puppy within the last two or three days, all the way up to, I've had my dog for a couple of years now, it hasn't gotten any better, I don't know what to do, I think it might actually be separation anxiety, and everything in between. And separation anxiety is a really, it's a really interesting thing. Um, so I wanted to jump on and do a quick video for you guys um, and just discuss it a little bit because I have, I've talked to so many people at this point about separation anxiety in dogs so I wanted to kind of break it down and try to give you like a step by step what generally my suggestions are, <coughs> excuse me, so I've got my notes here. Um, and I want to first go over some of the signs of separation anxiety, but these also are quite tricky. So there's kind of a caveat to this. So I'll get to that um, in just a moment after I list the signs that um, you can be looking for and you know checking off, does your dog have this, does your dog have that? Um, before I do that though, I wanna remind you as one of the, the steps actually, um, please comment below with your, um, I'll see your name, and uh, if, if you've been here before, if this is the first video you've watched, if you think your dog has separation anxiety, comment below, um, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching a, a replay or recording, um, I'll still get a notification and can jump on and say hi and acknowledge your comment or question below. And don't forget to grab your copy of Seven Miracle Steps. Um, this completely outlines my seven canine commandments, which I teach every single one of my in-home clients, including those with separation anxiety. Uh, you can grab yours. I put a description, a uh, link in the description, bit.ly slash canine secrets, and you spell out canine, C-A-N-I-N-E. So um, the link is in the description. So let's get right into this. Some of the uh, some of the behaviors, um, some of the ways you can tell that your dog may have separation anxiety: panting, drooling, vomiting, um, whining and crying, toileting, chewing. Usually, it's multiples of this list. Um, you know, excessively chewing, eating through walls, door frames, entry points. Maybe they're busting out of their crate. Um, they're figuring out how to get out of their crate, pacing, restlessness. Um, they might actually be jumping through and, and getting through closed doors or windows. Very, very dangerous. Um, but it happens. Excessive vocalization, meaning they're barking and whining and whimpering a lot. It's not stopping. Um, and sadly, you know, and, and they can do that with this with any of these things, but harming themselves, especially if they're busting out of their crate or trying to get through a door or a window frame. Separation anxiety can be that bad. But here's my caveat to this list of signs that your dog may have separation anxiety. Um, I would say they would probably have at least two of these, but um, a lot of these symptoms of separation anxiety may also be symptoms of other medical conditions. So first and foremost, you absolutely need to, in my opinion, visit a holistic or integrative veterinarian. Um, but if you don't have access to a holistic or integrative veterinarian in your area, uh, your regular veterinarian will also be able to help you. Um, they may not have the holistic knowledge um, that you would be looking for, but at least they can help you medically and let you know if there's anything um, medically going on with your dog that could be causing any of these symptoms because many of the symptoms of separation anxiety can actually be explained by underlying medical issues. So that's the very first thing you need to do is to get your um, dog checked out by a veterinarian 
bring up when you when you go in to see your veterinarian with your dog don't neglect any of these symptoms don't you know forget to tell them write out a list the night before or a couple of days before and make sure you go over all of these points and all of these questions that you have with your veterinarian so you don't miss any of them um, especially guys if your dog is getting to the point where they're actually harming themselves is very very serious um so treating separation anxiety once you have a diagnosis of separation anxiety um which again is going to first you're first going to rule out any medical underlying medical conditions with your veterinarian and then you're probably going to they they may suggest that your dog has separation anxiety um but generally you will consult with a, a dog behaviorist or um a dog trainer that specializes in separation anxiety to actually get your have your dog you know checked and diagnosed okay they meet the criteria we know there are no underlying medical conditions it seems like your dog may have separation anxiety and then you begin a treatment plan um, again I, I and I know I've mentioned this a number of times but I want to remind you that treating separation anxiety is very much a specialized um, thing it's not something that every dog trainer knows how to do it's not something that just any old dog trainer is going to be able to help you with you really do want to seek out a dog trainer who who specializes in separation anxiety that's not to say that there aren't dog trainers who may not necessarily specialize in it who can't help you i'm sure there are but you definitely want a dog trainer who has a track record track record and a good track record at that with treating separation anxiety in dogs. Um, I have been contacted so much by so many people about separation anxiety in their dogs. Um, and I think, I, I don't know if it's because I talk about it a lot or if it's because I've been through it with my dog and I've, I've successfully treated her and I'm trying to help other people. I don't know if like I'm being pulled in that direction to specialize in it myself or if there really is um, kind of a systemic problem in our country with the way we, and I don't mean you and I because if, if you're live watching this video with me, there's a good chance that um, you value your pet as a family member much in the same way that I do, but I know there are a lot of people um, in the world, in the country, who don't necessarily. So there are a lot of opportunities for dogs to develop separation anxiety. Um, you know, dogs who maybe were bred um, in a you know backyard breeder or puppy mill ha have very little socialization. Um, maybe they wind up in a shelter. Maybe they get returned to a shelter. Maybe you know there's all of these things that can cause our dogs to develop separation anxiety, and we don't always know what causes it. So um, that's really important to understand as well. We don't always know what causes it, so it can be hard to. Um, pinpoint in your dog exactly what happened especially when we rescue our dogs when we you know pull them off the street or we adopt them from a shelter or a rescue we don't always know their background so it's really difficult to determine where this behavior and where this uncertainty and um the anxiety comes from in your dog the important thing to know is that you can help them so um let's start off with what we would do I know and I have seen so many people, <coughs> excuse me, on social media suggest band-aids to other people who has a dog who is suffering from separation anxiety. A lot of people will say, well, just, you know, go to the vet and get some prescriptions, some anti-anxiety medication, um, and they'll be fine. Or go and, you know, get some CBD oil and they'll be fine. And I'm not saying not to use these things. I'm saying that these things are okay to use in conjunction with proper training because they're band-aids otherwise. And band-aids fall off really quickly, especially when you have a dog with severe separation anxiety. But any kind of separation anxiety, even if it's a mild case, band-aids are going to fall off really quickly if we're not 
changing the way your dog actually feels and we're not addressing the anxiety your dog actually has. So um, if your dog is actually harming themselves, then yes, definitely go to your vet and you probably wanna go ahead and start some anti-anxiety medication so that you can begin a treatment for separation anxiety. Outside of that, for me, is generally not the first thing that I try with a dog. Um, we do want to work on separation anxiety by training and reconditioning and letting our building our dog's confidence and letting them know that everything is okay. So um, we talked about the band-aids and also it's not a one size fits all solution. Every dog is different. Every dog's anxiety level is different. Every dog feels differently about different situations. So a treatment plan is very specialized to every dog. So I can't sit here on social media, whatever um, platform I may be on and say, do X, Y, Z and your dog's gonna be fine. It doesn't quite work that way because every dog is different. And a real treatment plan for separation anxiety is going to be customized for your dog. Um, that's not to say that there may not be a lot of similarities in what we're doing for every dog, but every dog is different. Every dog is going to take their own time and they're gonna need their own pace. And we may be setting up things differently inside of the home because not every home is set up the same way. So it really is a customized plan for your dog. So baby steps. Um, I, I, I really wanna hit on this before I tell you some of the things you can be doing. Baby, I mean like, micro baby steps are what we're working on when we're treating separation anxiety. You may literally be working in one second increments and that is okay. If that is what your dog needs, then work in one second increments and you're gonna go from one second to two seconds to three seconds and you're going to jump for joy when your dog hits like 10 or 15 seconds and you'll understand what I'm, I mean a little bit later, but everything we do is baby steps when we're helping a dog with separation anxiety heal. Um, so here are my recommendations. Don't push your dog past their threshold. Anytime you're working with a dog that truly has separation anxiety, do not push your dog past their threshold. It really can be detrimental to any training you are doing. It is going to make the anxiety worse, not better. Um, so so you're working in baby steps and do not push your dog past their threshold. Um, the first thing I do want to mention, grab my book, Seven Miracle Steps. Um, this book outlines my seven canine commandments, which are the foundation I give everybody that I train in home, whether they have separation anxiety or not, um, to start with. It's a really quick, quick read. You can get a digital copy for like, <clears throat> excuse me, $5.60, you can get a digital copy. Let me grab a drink of water. So sorry. Hmm. Okay, thank you. So the seven canine commandments are laid out in this book. I go over it with every single one of my in-home clients. If they do, if they don't have separation anxiety, these go in place first. Um, you can get a digital copy for $5.60, super super affordable. You can get a paperback copy if you're like me and you prefer to actually sit down the old fashioned way and touch the pages and go page to page. Um, you can read this in an hour or two and be up and running and on your way to making changes in your household that are gonna benefit both you and your dog and the rest of your family. Honestly, read it, you'll see, you'll understand, you'll be thanking me. Grab your copy, that's the first thing. The second thing is, and this is, this is like the Bible. If you have a dog with separation anxiety, treating separation anxiety in dogs by Melina De Martini Price. She is like the founder of everything separation anxiety in dogs. Of course, there were people. I'm sure there were people before her attempting to treat separation anxiety in dogs, but she pinpointed it. Everything I learned, I learned from her. 
um, in regards to separation anxiety, I have like little stickies everywhere because I, this is what I used to learn. In addition to all of the other dog training experience I have and all of the certifications I have and all of the, um, you know, psychology degrees and, uh, you know, animal behavior certifications and everything else I have, I had all of that. I went to this to learn how to treat separation anxiety in my own dog who I adopted um, Kim, who you've seen in a number of my videos, we adopted her. She had separation anxiety. This is what I use. This is going to be your Bible. Um, get it and read it. And if you have questions, let me know. Because while I think it was fairly easy for me to understand as just a pet parent, I did already have all of the knowledge of dog training um, under my belt when I read it. So if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'd be happy to help you. If there's something you don't understand, let me know. I'd be happy to help you. Um, so that's gonna be your Bible. She's the best. Um, once you're done reading this book, you're putting these things in place, the absolute best thing you can do from here, from af after reading my book, after reading Melina's book, seek the help of a force-free, positive reinforcement trainer or behaviorist in your area who specializes in separation anxiety. And that's key. I know this is the second time I've mentioned it in this video. Specializing in separation anxiety is going to be key. Um, and you definitely want to check out references, referrals, call people, find out what the process was for them, find out how they feel about them, really do your research. This is um, the UPS guy, I think, might be coming here. I don't know. Let's see what Kim does. <laughs> Thank you, sweet pea. Um, so really do your research when you are picking somebody to help you because this is very serious stuff. Um, I do take private clients, even with separation anxiety, though my time is extremely limited. If you do wanna reach out to me about it, I put a link in the description. Um, and let's see, remember that every dog is different. So treatment plans are gonna differ based on you, based on your dog, based on your schedule and how um, you have your home set up and all these different Whenever all of that, you're working in baby steps, don't push them past their threshold. And then there are some products that I do like and I do recommend for use. In addition to the products you're gonna find in here because you're gonna need baby gates, you're gonna need possibly cameras, and there's, there's a lot of stuff that, you, that you're probably going to need. But there are some things that I do recommend uh, to different people in different situations, and I put links in the description. I really love the Thunder shirt. It has helped me in the past with a number of different dogs. I cannot say that it is effective for 100% of dogs, um, but I think there is some level of effective effectiveness in almost every dog. Um, so it may not be 100% effective, but it may help some. So give it a try, definitely. Uh, there's an Amazon link in the description. Um, yogurt, sheep's milk, dog treats. These, I, I'm kind of, again, they don't work for every dog, but I have seen them work wonders on some dogs. Give them a try. They're well worth the try. Um, sheep's milk in itself has a very calming effect on the body. So um, using sheep's milk to create dog treats is, you know, just providing that calming, calming in the body for your dog. Um, Animalio essential oils. I can't tell you how much I love Animalio. I actually have a bottle right here that I'll show you. This one is Sunshine in a Bottle. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's not the one that I necessarily recommend for separation anxiety, but it just happens to be my absolute favorite blend because it just smells like sunshine in a bottle. Um, for separation anxiety, the blend I primarily recommend is Calmamau, but there are a lot of different blends and we may suggest different types of blends depending on the situation for your dog. So definitely reach out to me if you have questions about that. Um, source CBD. Source CBD, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I changed that. My bad. CBD Dog Health um, is the current 
CBD dog oil. Um, they have tinctures, they have treats that I recommend. I also put a link for that in the description. Um, CBD oil does work wonders for some dogs. So again, I don't necessarily think it's on a, it, it's going to work for a hundred percent of dogs. It is well worth the try. Um, so these, these really are what I, th these are the steps I recommend. Um, if you do know the source of anxiety for your dog, of course, the best thing we can do is remove that source of anxiety. We don't always know what that source of anxiety is and that's the problem, right? So if there are any sources of anxiety for your dog and you know that they are sources of anxiety, go ahead and do everything you can to remove the sources of anxiety. Your dog is going to be much happier. You're gonna be much happier. Um, and again, like I, I, I said, depending on the situation, typically the last resort for me is uh, prescription anti-anxiety medications. But if your dog is to the point where they're harming themselves or others, you may need to start with that before you even begin training. Definitely reach out to your veterinarian. If you have a holistic or integrated veterinarian um, in your area, please, please, please seek, seek their advice um, and take your dog in for a checkup. Discuss everything with your veterinarian. There's nothing you can tell your veterinarian that they haven't heard before. They are interested in everything you have to say about your dogs. Not only, um, you know, any physical issues that they have going on or any anxiety issues they have going on, anything behavioral, it all matters. Um, even if you think it doesn't matter, it matters. So tell your veterinarian about it. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I gave you a ton of information. Um, I know I gave you a ton of information. Don't forget to grab your copy of the seven miracle steps. Again, these, um, seven canine commandments, everything I lay out for every single one of my in-home clients, you can get a digital copy for like five bucks. Go ahead and grab your copy. Let me know in the comments. If you have a dog, if you think they have separation anxiety, if you have treated for separation anxiety, if there are other products that you have used to help that have helped your dog, let me know. I'd love to find out about them and potentially recommend them to, you know, hundreds and thousands of other people so that they can benefit as well. Let me know about it. Post it in the description, the comments or the description. Uh, yeah, comments below. <laughs> and, um, if you have a question, if you have um, an idea of another video you'd like me to do, please leave that in the comments below as well. I'd love to hear your stories and your questions, and I'd love to be able to answer your questions. That's what I'm here for. So with that, I'm gonna end this video. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.